Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're talking about the various elements of grace and the work of salvation, and today we'll talk about sanctifying grace. Last time we discussed actual grace and why we need it to do good work, but what's sanctifying grace, and why do we need it? It hasn't been too long since this has come up, but apart from giving glory to God, the main goal of the Catholic faith is the salvation of souls, and very little could be more important for accomplishing that purpose than sanctifying grace. To understand why, it's helpful to know a little about original sin. We'll go into this in greater depth later, but basically there is a stain of sin on our souls, which, if it doesn't get cleared up, will end with us going to hell. Through his death, Jesus set in motion a way for us to be saved from that stain of sin. His method changes the part of ourselves which is in sin, so that we can be reconciled with God. This happens at baptism, and again every time we participate in the sacrament of confession. Previously, we were in a state of mortal sin, or the sin severe enough for hell. And then, through these sacraments, we are restored to a state of grace. That grace is called sanctifying grace. At baptism, a person is purified of all of their sins, mortal and otherwise, as well as the need to pay any further penalties for their sins. In confession, a person is purified of all of their sins, mortal and otherwise, though there may be other penalties that they'll need to go through which aren't severe enough to land them in hell. We can be in only two states in this life, sanctifying grace and mortal sin. Sanctifying grace is different than actual grace. Instead of being an action of God upon the soul of a person, prompting them to do good from without, sanctifying grace lives within the soul itself, allowing the Holy Spirit to act freely, to grant you good things from within, and it's only in this state, when one has life within them, that a person can enter eternal life. Next time, we'll take a look at some other terms that are used to describe different kinds of grace in the Catholic Church. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.